Today is the 6th of September 2010. Uh, we're conducting a short interview with Sir Martin Gilbert. Uh, my name is Bea Lefkowitz. First of all, Sir Martin Gilbert, thank you very much for having thank agreed you. to talk to us today. Right. Do you want me to look at you or the camera? Uh, me, please. Okay, um, perhaps you can tell me something about the importance uh, of the topic of your latest book in Ishmael's house. About six years ago, I decided to write the story of Jews living in Muslim lands from Mohammed until today, until Ahmadinejad. I had worked on this in the 1970s. I'd met many people. And I, the first thing which astonished me was the tremendous range of places from which they came. Afghanistan, Iraq, all the way from the Kabul River to the Atlantic Ocean of Morocco and right down south as far as Yemen and Aden and the Central Asian republics of the Soviet, of what had become the Soviet Union, the, the last remnants, if you like, of that great Muslim area. So I began to meet people, talk to them, uh, go to the archives, and I realized more and more that whereas in my other area of interest, the Holocaust, there was a tremendous archive of survivor testimonies, oral testimonies, visual testimonies, the famous Spielberg archive, and many other archives. For Jews who had lived under Muslim rule, and this 850,000 who had been dispossessed between 1945 and 1960, there was no such archival source. So as an individual historian, I of course went to see individuals, but that creates a tiny archive. And I think what is tremendously important now is there should be a systematic effort to have as many testimonies as possible from this extraordinary range of people, places, and historical experiences. Why do you think it's an important topic? What can other people how, learn from this, from the experience, let's say, of the Jews from Arab lands? I think the, the importance of the story of what happened to Jews uh, in Arab lands in the 40s, 50s, and 60s is twofold. First of all, it's very important for Jews to know the story of their compatriots, if you like. When, when I was a boy growing up in London in the 1950s, uh, Jews from Arab lands were exotics. Uh, people pointed out in the street. My father said, well, he's from Iraq. I mean, Iraq, you know, he's from Libya, Libya. There was something exotic and bizarre about it. The idea that they were part of this intimate Jewish worldwide community of 13, 14 million people hadn't really penetrated. So I think it's very important for Ashkenazi Jews, Jews generally to know that these people are an integral part of their communities, of the Jewish people, particularly when it comes to the question of Israel, where the Jews from Arab lands form the largest single group of, uh, of people and uh, made an incredible impact on the society, initially with, with great difficulty. They were initially, as one knows, treated as outsiders and in many ways second-class citizenship. And in my book, in Ishmael's house, which I write about them, I tell the story of how initially Israel was so reluctant to take them in. There were cabinet meetings when people said we should restrict the numbers at a time when, of course, these hundreds of thousands of people were desperate to find refuge. That changed. And Jews from Arab lands have become, across the board of Israeli society, important central. So that, for the Jewish people, I think it's, it's a terribly important story. It also has a wider implication. We're dealing in the modern world with the whole refugee issue all over the globe displaced persons, and what is to be their future, what are to be their rights, what recompense can they get, and what justice can they expect. And it's particularly, of course, important at the moment where the whole question of Palestinian Arab refugees and what their future is to be within the context of the future agreement, the much long-awaited and possibly imminent agreement, what is their place to be? And here we have this equivalent Jewish diaspora of refugees 
who were not, as in the case of the Palestinian Arabs, kept as refugees, if you like, by order of the United Nations, by design of the United Nations. But the Jews from Arab lands have gone all over the world, uh, have built up their lives, rebuilt their lives, become citizens of new countries, but that doesn't make them any less dispossessed and any less needing of recompense and justice. Yes, you were saying, please. One tremendously important aspect, which I think makes the memories and recording of the memories of Jews from Arab lands so important, is that we live today in a world where the refugee issues are dominating. And millions, actually tens of millions, of refugees exist in the world. And the question of their rights, recompense and justice, uh, dominates many international conflicts, particularly the Arab-Israel conflict, where the Palestinian refugees have been maintained as refugees by the United Nations, have not, if you like, been allowed to abandon their refugee status, and therefore on the international agenda, their future has become an important topic. Uh, they are a part of the negotiations for peace, which continue all the time and uh, which hopefully will reach fruition sooner rather than later. But the Jews from Arab lands who never became refugees, they became citizens of the countries they went to. Uh, they became citizens of Israel, France, Italy, Britain, Canada, the United States, all over the world. Um, they still, although they have done well and they have children and grandchildren who are citizens of new countries, they are still deserving of recompense and restitution and justice. The fact that they got on with their lives and weren't forced to remain refugees as the Palestinian Arabs were by the United Nations doesn't mean that the Jews from Arab lands don't have these same rights. And they are, in fact, their stories are a tremendously important part of the current international agenda. Another point I, I think is important is the Jews from Arab lands have become part of many different nations and cultures. Here in Britain, in particular, their stories aren't well known. They have their own communities. The Jews of Aden have a community. The Jews of Yemen have a community. The Jews of Bahrain have a community. The Jews of Iraq, Jews of Egypt, Jews of Morocco. The more that British Jews can understand that this is an integral part of the British Jewish story. Just as my grandparents came from Russian Poland, so my neighbor's grandparents came from Baghdad or Casablanca or Sana. And this story needs to be not just told, but needs to be recorded and needs to be available. Because in every generation, I mean, I'm the old generation now. I'm coming to the end of my writing career. But the next generation of historians and writers, novelists, journalists need to have the ability to go to these stories and to see what the Jews of Arab lands had lived through, what they'd achieved, what they'd suffered, what became of them. Safadi Voices is a marvelous project, one which has tremendous potential uh, to help Jewish communities know who they are, to help Jews from Arab lands themselves get restitution and justice, and to help all those who are going to write Jewish history or teach Jewish history to have a superb source of something which should be as widely known as possible. So Martin, thank you very much for these words. It's a pleasure.